So a lesson for you today on related rates. Related rates is another one of the topics. It's in the appendix of the Green Calculus Nelson textbook, but something that you will do at university. And I'm sure some of you are looking this up because you're in another course altogether. So let's take a look at what related rates are. So in related rates problems, we're given the rate of change of one quantity and asked to find the rate of change of a related quantity. So normally it's with respect to time. So let's do, I've got four different word problems here that I think by the time I'm done, you'll, you'll have a good grasp of what you should be doing. So it says a snowball is melting in such a way that the volume is decreasing. So the volume. So we need an equation for the volume of a snowball. So that's the first thing I'm going to write out and then I'm going to jump back to reading the problem. So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now hopefully your teacher will give you these or maybe at least a list of the ones that you should know. Uh, this isn't one that a lot of people remember, especially after you've done a whole bunch of different things in math and not worked on volumes. So it's decreasing at a rate of 1 centimeter cubed per minute. At what rate is the radius decreasing when r is 5 centimeters? So we need to go back here and look at the information that we've been given. And I like to kind of put it off to the side. So we have the dv dt, or the rate of change of the volume, is 1 centimeter a minute. And it's decreasing, so that means we have to make it negative. 1 centimeter cubed per minute. And at what rate is the radius changing? So I'm trying to find dr dt. So that's what my goal here is, to find dr dt when r is equal to 5 centimeters. Okay, so going back to the volume equation, <clears throat> I'm now going to take the derivative of it and a drink of water. <coughs> so the volume, derivative of the volume is dv dt. And the derivative of 4 thirds pi r cubed now. So I'm just going to leave the constants here. 4 thirds pi and the derivative of r cubed is going to be 3r squared dr dt. So anytime you take the derivative of one of the variables, you have to say with respect to time. <coughs> okay, so simplifying that, that's going to give me dv dt is equal to, um, I have these threes would cancel out. So I have 4 pi r squared dr dt. So now I go to my little information box here <clears throat> and I'm going to plug in everything that I know. So dv dt is minus 1 and r, I want to know when r is 5 and then all I have to do is solve for dr dt which of course is nice basic easy thing here to do because 5 squared is 25 times 4 is 100, so I have 100 pi. I'm dividing by 100 pi, so dr dt is going to be minus 1 divided by 100 pi. And that's not a very nice answer, right? So let's divide that out, and on your calculator, you would get minus 0 0.003 centimeters per minute. Now, some teachers don't like you to put the units in your calculation. Um, I particularly don't mind where you put it, but you should still have a concluding statement. And you can say that the radius... Now, you have two ways to write this. You either say the radius is changing at minus 0 0.03, but if you use the word decreasing, which is really what you've been asked to in the question. So I would say the radius is decreasing at, and then you don't need the negative, right? Because I'm already telling you that it's decreasing centimeters per minute when the radius is five centimeters. Okay, so there's your first question. Good old snowball melting. So it could be a balloon being blown up or all sorts of different things. Okay, a water tank is built in the shape of a circular cone with a height of 5 meters and a diameter of 6 meters at the top. Water is being poured into the tank at a rate of 1.6 meters cubed per minute. 
find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is two meters deep. So we need a little picture here, right? So let's draw a cone. There's my cone. It doesn't have to be perfect, like mine is not. And I have a radius here and I have a height. And in this case, the radius is three and the height is five. Now I got the radius of three because the diameter was six, right? So six divided by two, six divided by two gave me that three meters radius. Okay, so <clears throat> I am going to write out the volume equation for a cone. And so the volume of a cone, maybe you remember this one. <clears throat> I kind of liked it because it's um, a third of a right cylinder, right? A right cylinder is pi r squared h, and a cone is one third of that. So let's go to what we've been given here over in the side. So we have um, the water is being poured in. So that's a change in the volume, right? The dvdt is... 1.6 cubic meters per minute and we're trying to find the rate at which the water level is rising so I'm looking for the change in the height so dh dt is what when and we have our when here see when the depth is 2 meters so when h is equal to 2 so with this question, we have a little problem. And the problem is that we have two variables on this side of the equation. And we don't want to be taking the derivative with respect to three different, or of three different variables. So I need to write one of these variables in terms of the other. And obviously the one to go is going to be the radius because I'm trying to find the derivative of the height with respect to time. If I had been asked to find the rate of change in the radius with respect to time, then I would have to replace the h with something, a relationship of the h in terms of r. So if you look at what we've been given here uh, for this cone, the radius to the height is 3 to 5. So again, depending on which, if, if I had said what is dr dt, then I would solve for h and get rid of the h in terms of r, but I want to find the h dt, so I want to write r in terms of h. So r is going to be h times 3 divided by 5. r equals 3 h over 5. So now by substituting this into this equation, I can get only h's on this side, and that's what I want. So I'm going to plug that in here. So my r becomes 3 h over 5. Don't forget that it's still squared times h. So let's simplify that. That's going to give me 1 third pi. 3 h over 5 squared is going to be 9 h squared over 25 and it's still times h. So um, the 3 can go into 9 so that's going to give me 3 pi h cubed over 25. 3 pi h cubed over 25. Okay, so now I've simplified my volume equation so that when I take the derivative, it will be with respect to h, derivative of h with respect to time, derivative of v with respect to time, and I have all my information here that I'm going to substitute in. So dv dt is 1.6 and 3 pi, okay, that's all right, and h is 2, so I'm going to, um, hey, I didn't take the derivative yet. Let's have a, wait, 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 back up. Oh my goodness, I'm just so excited to plug things in. Don't be like that. Because you would have said right away, well, I'm missing a dh dt, right? So dv, just we'd already done so much work, thought we were done. 
So dv dt, and so now I have to do the derivative of this. So that's going to be 3 times 3 is 9 pi over 25 h squared. And what else do we need? We need a dh dt. You will know if you forget to do that because you won't have anything to solve for. Okay, so now we plug in what we know. So we have a 1.6 on this side. So I have 9 pi, h is 2, so 2 squared over 25 dh dt. And that's going to give me like a 36 pi over 25. I'm going to divide this side by 36 pi over 25, which means I'm going to multiply it by 25 over 36 pi. And that's going to be my dh dt. I'm running out of space here. And so dh dt, if you do that on your calculator, you get about 0 0.35. So now a nice concluding statement. So therefore the water level, water level is rising because it's positive. And we know that it's being poured in. Just use your head there for a minute at approximately 0 0.35. 35 meters per minute when, because it's a specific time, when the height or depth of the water, whatever you want to say, is 2 meters. Okay, so that's a nice little problem for you for a water tank. Next time you're, <laughs> next time you're looking at a cylindrical water tank, you can find the rate of change. Okay, question number three. It says a spotlight shines on a wall 10 meters away. A man two meters tall walks from the spotlight towards the wall at 1.2 meters per second. Okay, so let's make a little picture here. So we've got some kind of spotlight here shining and we've got a man. Now you know that wherever you're standing, let's say the wall is over here and that's going to be 10 meters away. You don't laugh at my drawings, okay? So if you're really close, say I'm standing here, then the shadow on the wall would go way up off my page here. So the guy is standing, um, what did it say? He's standing three meters from the wall. So three meters from the wall, that would mean that he is at, so if this is x here, this is going to be 10 minus x. So if you draw a little triangle like this and you put your man here, so he would have to be about, well, let's put him right where we wanted him to be. So now he's really tall and skinny. But as he goes closer to the wall, of course, the shadow would go. So if I put him over here, you can see the shadow here would be shorter, right? Or smaller. You've done that before, right? Walked into walk toward a wall and you can see how your shadow shrinks until it's the same height as you are when you're standing right against the wall. So let's call this y here and this is going to be my x. So I'm trying to make up some sort of equation which describes the relationship of the distance from the light and the wall. So when he's here the distance is x and the shadow would be y. So we have a relationship here. So we have 2 is to x, so his 2 meters, let's put that on here so you know where I got my 2 from. 2 is to x as y is to 10. Okay, so have a nice relationship here. So that means that y is going to be 20 over x. Okay, so there's my equation that I'm going to work with. And I have to have some, what am I looking to find here? So I know the speed that he's walking at. So that's the change in x with respect to time because he's moving this way. dx dt is 1.2 meters per second. I'm trying to find how fast his shadow is decreasing. So I want to know what dy dt is. And when he is 3 meters from the wall, would mean when x is 7, so when he has walked 7 meters. So when 
x is equal to 7. Okay, 7 because it's 10 minus 3. Okay, so all I have to do now is take the derivative of this equation, and that's going to be really easy. It's not a difficult one at all. So dy dt is going to be, remember this is like x to the negative 1, so negative 20 x to the negative 2, or over x squared dx dt. And now all I have to do is plug everything in. So I'm trying to find dy dt, so I've got that on the right side. Well, the right side of the equation, but the left side. <laughs> Casey said, no, she has nowhere left from her right. And dx dt is 1.2. And if you multiply that all out, you would get, uh, that's like minus 24 over 49. And you could leave it like that because it's going to be a big decimal. That would be a pretty exact answer. So you could say the shadow is decreasing. Notice it's negative. It's decreasing at... 24 over 49 meters per second when he is 3 meters from the wall. And that's all you have to do from the wall. Ta-da! Okay, so there's a nice little spotlight question for you. And the last question I'm going to do is... Number four here, it says a man walks north at 1.5 meters per second and a woman walks west at 2 meters per second from the same starting point. At what rate is the distance increasing one minute later? Okay, so we have a starting point. Let's call it P here. And the man is going this way at 1.5 meters per second and the woman is walking west so she's going this way at 2 meters per second. At what rate is the distance is the distance increasing one minute later? So that's between them. That didn't come out very well, but we want to know this distance, right? So when we first start out, she's going faster. So it'd be something like this, and then it's going to go like that, and so on. So I'm trying to find this length here, which is really like a z, x, y, z here. So um, let's write our information that we're given. So she's walking west, so we know that dx dt is equal to, we've got one guy going, um, one the man walking north. So this is 2 meters per second, and dy dt is going to be 1.5 meters per second, and we're trying to find dz dt. Okay, so we can write this out simply. We have all the rates of change for all of them, so I don't need to write one in terms of the other. And this is just a simple Pythagorean theorem question because this is a right triangle, directly north, directly west. So I can say that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And if I take the derivative of these, I would get 2z dz dt equals 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Now obviously everything has a 2 in front of it, so I can divide the entire equation by 2, and I just have z dz dt. Okay, so what is the problem here now? If I try to plug everything in, I don't have a z, but I'm trying to find dz dt, and I have the x and the x dt. I have the I have this one and I have this one, right? I don't have x, y, or z. So I need to know where are these people at this specific point in time. So one minute later, where is everyone? So at one minute, the man has gone how far? 
So one minute, if he's going 1.5 meters per second, that means he has gone 1.5. So 1.5 meters per second, I'm going to multiply that by 60. So 1.5 times 60 is 90 meters. And the woman, the woman has gone 2 times 60 or 120 meters. So I have 60 meters here. Let's write that on my diagram. 60 meters. This is going to be 120 meters. So this is at that specific point in time. And I need to know what Z is. So Z is going to be the square root of 90 squared plus 120 squared. And that comes out to 150 meters. Okay, so now I have all the information that I need. I have had to do a little more calculations here because we just had a nice little Pythagorean theorem to work with. So Z is going to be 150. So I have 150 dz dt is equal to x was um, 120 because that's our woman here. She's faster. 120 and dx dt is 2 and y is 90 and dy dt is 1.5 and so I have to multiply this all out so that's what 240 and 90 times 1.5 that's um, 135 and I'm dividing it by 150 so dz dt is equal to 375 over 150, which is equal to 2.5. So now you can write the concluding statement. Therefore, the distance is increasing, increasing at 2.5 meters per second when t is equal to one minute. So that means the distance between them is increasing at that rate at one minute at a specific time. Okay, so that's four little word problems for you. Hopefully that will help you be able to solve any of the ones that you need to do. Just remember that you have to, you know, like work things through. This one, like I said, here we had three dx, dy, and dz, all with respect to time. But we could calculate these at a specific time, and we could calculate this. So that worked out well. But normally there's only two. Um, but there's always exceptions, right? So hope that helped you out. And um, we'll take a look and see what the next little appendix lesson is. And I'll work that one out for you too. Bye for now.